Welcome back to the 2019 Warwick Disc Golf Championships. I'm Ian Anderson, again joined by the man, the myth, the legend, Steve Brinster. How's it going, Steve? It's going great. Cool. Uh, we are back out here for round three, part two. Got a really good battle brewing between uh, Fish and Cam. They're playing really well. Yeah, they certainly are. And, uh, you know, this this course is showing you uh, what it takes to, to go out there and score. And these guys are putting some uh, nice rounds together. It turns out it takes all the shots, man. <laughs> We've seen quite the array so far. Uh, it's been really cool. Uh, Cam and Fish tied at 20 down. Oh, we're heading into hole 10. What is our pro play, Steve? All right. Well, I think you're going to see most players playing the around the right side, hyzer shot here. Uh, this is, a, you know, one of the more technical shots out there. You really need to try and get it to stall and then come back down into this pin. And uh, not hyzer too much where uh, it goes over this OB wall that is behind the pin. Yeah, what a hole. It, really interesting. Yeah, the back nine of Warwick is uh, just absolutely classic. And uh, we see here right off the bat, he does the exact opposite of what I said, and uh, <laughs> which has been pretty true to what we've seen uh, from these guys so far. They're taking a lot of untraditional routes. But uh, here we go with a more traditional one, and that looks pretty good. And it's just a, that's a very typical spot for people to end up um, down there with 30 to 40 footers uh, that are somewhat obstructed by the tree. That looks like Hank's going for that same line Fish took. The one you prescribed, and that worked great. That worked out good. That worked out good. I usually like to see something thrown a little more flat release here, and that gets a little extra stall, gets a little bit better angle. Um, but these guys oh. are taking that approach, and they uh, they give themselves opportunities from doing very different ways. Yeah, like like that one a little bit long. Uh, Cam came up a little bit short with that forehand play, and finds the pole on the putt. We got Hank, I believe. Oh no, sorry, that's Fish. <laughs> Good bid, but not to be. Devin. Yeah, now we see two of these guys missed um, this hole, and this is one of those holes that you just really want to get, especially going into the back. Um, it's certainly one of the easier holes on the back nine. Does it kind of get your strokes on the front and hold on to them on the back type of deal? Yeah, the the back is is a little bit more demanding. Um, it's certainly the what I would call the prettier half of the course, um, but it's uh, there's definitely opportun more opportunities for bogeys. There's a little bit more OB, and um, it's certainly one of the, the side of the course that uh, you want to get going early and then hold on. Gotcha. Uh, there are Devin and Hank with some great birdies. Uh, again, making this race a little bit tighter. They're just four back of our leaders, personified by Andrew and Cameron, uh, as we head into hole 11. Yeah, hole 11, 286. Uh, I think you're going to see most players play down the left-hand side here. Um, the goal is to really just be disciplined enough to throw something straight and try and hit a 30-foot putt um, from there. Um, players that try and get it to turn up usually end up finding this OB stream unless it's absolutely perfect. You going rock off the tee or what are you, what are you picking usually? Yeah, this is a mid-range rock for me and uh, about medium power. All right. Hank? That looks just about perfect. It's uh, This is one of those holes where the more you try and chew off is usually when you try and find trouble. And, uh, you know, he's going to be left about 45. He could have got that to finish a little straighter. Um, it would have given him a better opportunity, but um, not bad. Devin with a pretty good pull as well. Just a little short of the gap, it looks like. Yeah, he, he'll have something from there, but I'm sure these guys are just trying just for a little bit more. Cam, great forehand hole if you want trying to park it. I came in a little deep there, but uh, well within his range. OB sits probably a mere 10 feet behind the pin uh, from his angle, so that is something that he's going to have to think about. Are those white stakes lurking back there? Yes. And fish? Uh -oh. oh, and that stayed in bounds, which is very fortunate, and it left him with something uh, probably inside 20, so that was a good result. Oh my gosh, man, wow. Devin with these long bids. Wow. He is just teasing them. Oh, that was brutal. Got, <laughs> got all three parts of the basket. Yes, didn't get the pull, but that's about it. Hank, looking for the two. Oh, drop. Oh. 
And you see from the tee, those look like they're 45 or 50, but they're really uh, just good opportunities from there uh, without taking a lot of risk. Sure. Seems like a smart play. Came with a bit of a misfire for him, but I'm sure he'll make the comebacker. Uh, Fish looking to take sole possession of the lead with a two here. Damn it, Fish. <laughs> Doing a little dancing. Yeah, you'll see him do a reset, uh, you know, a couple times around. Um, he either had a bad thought in his head or something distracted him. He'll go into full reset mode, and huh. uh, it looks like, uh, you know, it was enough to get him off his game there. It looks like it, unfortunately. So it looks like Cam can hit this. They will stay tied, and he does. So no no birdies there, which is a little surprising. We have with four good opportunities. Um, but at the same time, no bogeys, which uh, you see quite often with the OB River there. Uh, this is a hole that you can take a number on. And uh, so despite no, not, nobody taking a birdie, uh, these guys are no damage. Yeah, I can see you getting a little greedy here. It could definitely bite you. Uh, there's Devin dropping in his par after almost making a really nice two. Uh, we'll have to settle for the three and sit one back at Hank. Uh, we're still tied at the top with Andrew and Cam sitting at three and four on the rounds. Uh, that's going to lead us into hole 12. Where are we going? All right, hole 12 is uh, another, the third hole of this little birdie corner here. Um, this is what I would call pretty routine hyzer shot here. This hole is all about speed. So if you can get your speed right, um, you can make it around this corner and give yourself a putt inside the circle. I think you see a lot of players end up throwing a little too hard, end up kind of buried under these trees in the back here, and that usually leaves you with a very low ceiling putt from 50. So let's we'll see if these guys could dial that in. You going like Firebird off the tee here? Um, I go like a standstill mid-range. Oh, interesting. Okay. Oh, and it rolled back. And it looks like Hank went in a little early, if I had to guess. Yeah, he's inside, and, and that's not the spot to be. He's going to be uh, having to work for par. Oh, yeah. Devin a little higher here. Oh, no. Oof, not, that's a good roll out there from uh, what was could have potentially been a really bad spot. Yeah, it gave him a lot better angle on that second shot, right? Uh, Cam, lining up the Heiser backhand as well. Looks pretty good. Got it just a little hot there. It's kind of a, a tight gap late. Those little kind of guardian trees out in the fairway. Yeah, this is one of the most touchy and deceiving holes on the course, and that's a very typical play what you see there. He's going to have 50 low ceiling kind of spin putt. Um, it's definitely speed is the big thing that you want to dial in. Definitely see that. Now there's Devin getting pretty close. That should work for a par the way he putts. I believe this will be Hank with a looks like a tougher look. Yeah, this is a tough spot. I'd be surprised if he gets up and down here. And that's... That's a good shot, and looks like he even got a nice little roll, maybe 20 left. Yeah, he's got a chance for it. Pretty impressive. Uh, Cameron with a long look for the two. Twice on this basket? Come on, dude. <laughs> Just a little short. And fish. Like the tree. You see there that low ceiling that, uh, that just got Cameron is also making fish work a little bit. Yeah, it did. Put a little more pace on that than he probably wanted. Uh, caught the band, kicked right. Should work for a par. Speaking of pars, here's Hank's bid. Yeah, you, Hank. yeah buddy. Yeah, he made that look routine, and, and that corner can be really nasty. And uh, it looked like he casually just threw a, a little jump putt around the corner there. But uh, he did some good work to, to get up and down. Yeah, I'm sure he had to dodge a lot. We couldn't see from that angle. There's Fish making good on his par. I'm sure he's disappointed, though. Had, a, had an opportunity for the two there. Uh, same deal for Cam, as he'll drop in his par, and they will remain tied. Nobody wants to take that lead, man. Yeah, no birdies in the last two holes for the for the lead card here. And uh, after going through those three holes there, that's really something you want to at least get two out of three on as you step up to some uh, these uh, this harder stretch. Yeah, they, they can stay under on the round. Uh, we are still looking at two twenties from Cam and Fish. Hole thirteens on deck. What are we doing? All right, 373 uphill. This is one of those big arm holes that uh, there's only going to be a few guys in the field that have a chance of getting all the way up to the pin. Um, you got to navigate up this hill, past those trees, all the way up to this blue basket here. Um, and it's often a headwind, so it's going to take a full rip uh, for somebody to get an opportunity here. 
So you, you're reaching for a destroyer, I'd imagine? Absolutely. Hank? This looks a little too turned over. Yeah, he's he's going to even have a little work left to uh, just get his par here. Devin? So that's yeah, so past the short pin, but, you know, he's still every bit of 70, um, so not the best opportunity. Yeah, it does take a crush to get there, doesn't it? Cam? It really does. Yeah, these eyes all bomb, and they're all way short. <laughs> wow. Let's see how close fish can get. All highs are... Uh, that would be a real crush uh, for him to get up there, and he put a pretty good move on it. That's uh, it. that's pretty impressive. Uh, he in the last year seems to have uh, found another gear with distance, and uh, so he gave himself a shot. Let's see if he can convert. It'd be nice to see. Uh, good up shot there from Hank. This will be Devin's version of that, and he's scaring it every time. Yeah, Devin is, uh, you know, kind of known for throwing in some long ones every round, and uh, he's definitely gave it a scare a couple times this, this one. <laughs> that looked good from Cam as well. I'll have to settle for par, and here is Fish to get a stroke on the card, and I imagine most of the field. Wow. Yep, nice putt, nice putt, and uh, it's definitely a good get. Well done, Fish. He finally wanted the lead enough, he, he just swooped it. Hank, saving his par. <laughs> it was a little sketchy, but went in. <laughs> Devin and Cam figuring out who's out. Oh, there's Devin's par, and Cam will do the same here in a second. Yeah, threes here not losing much on the field, like you said. Um, twos are a definite bonus. And, uh, you know, that was for Fish to grab one there. That was a nice way for him to to extend his lead. Yeah, great throw. And like you mentioned, he didn't even throw a distance line. Just That was Heiser. <laughs> yeah, he had, he had good height on it, which is typically, uh, you know, the key to that hole there. Everybody tries to throw it a little harder. It comes out low and... Uh, he was pretty disciplined there to keep it up in the air. It was. It worked out for him. Really nice. Getting a great birdie. Tying Cam on the round and taking one stroke for the event as we head into 14. Yeah, hole 14, one of uh, the signature holes out here. Just an absolute gorgeous hole going down the hill here through this gap. And uh, shots finishing through the gap here will leave you with a pretty routine upshot over onto this little peninsula here with the basket across the OB River. And yeah, what a beautiful hole. This is cool looking. Yeah, this is one of those holes that makes your, your dream course uh, um, when you have your dream 18. Uh -huh, for sure. What, what's your play off the tee here? Um, I try and uh, pound a destroyer pretty hard um, through the gap. And uh, if I really catch it right, I could, I, I could get all the way out to the island. I imagine. It's a pretty good pull from Fish. I imagine that's still going to work for a three. Yeah, that, that, that's a real nice shot. Um, anything that lands down there in the gap is going to give you a good opportunity. Um, you're going to have a little bit to, you know, to navigate the trees on either side, um, but it looked like he was in pretty good position. And no OB over there for Hank to worry about? No, no OB over there, but very tough from that side. Yeah, some, some natural OB anyway. Devin is going to flex in time. Oh. Or, or could do that. Yeah, great kick out there. It, it, it's a little deceiving, but it's about 400 feet down to those trees. Um, so you got to give it a pretty good ride before it even gets down there. All these guys are ending up right, and uh, it looks like Cam and Hank are going to be uh, having some trouble here, probably just laying up short of the river yeah, you called for it. both of them. There is Hank with the layup. Uh, Devin, see how aggressive he gets. He's got a clean line. Looks pretty good. And it, yeah, pin high there inside the circle. That was a great shot. I wonder if Cam's going to lay up, Steve. Looks like he's it thinking about like it. it. Yeah. Is he going to try and skip it across? 
Oh, that's that's got to be OB. Oh, no, it is. Caught that tree and just trickled OB, unfortunately. Yeah, and that's, I just think that was a bad mental decision there. Look, he was just out of position there, and uh looks like it's going to cost him a stroke. Yep, tried to force it. It did not work out. That worked out for Fish, though. That should work for a drop-in three, and he'll be getting strokes on his closest competitor. And Hank, you know, kind of took the conservative play there, but now he's got a no-stress par, and uh, he didn't try and force anything there. Exactly, and Cam will be looking at a, at a bogey there. After he throws his fourth for the upshot, uh, Devin. Nice birdie. Yeah, that's a that's a good birdie. It's certainly a short tee is is a good birdie, and the long tee is a great birdie. So a uh, nice pick up there from him. And fish, pretty routine for him, I'd imagine. Nice putt. He looks at it's it longer. Nice. Than... <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. No, I said it's always nice looking back up this fairway. It's just a great look and uh, just soaking it all in. This is one of my favorite holes in the whole world. This place has got to look amazing this spring. Spring and summer when all these these trees are in full bloom. Oh, no doubt. There are those birdies out of Devin and Andrew and Cam with the unfortunate bogeys and losing two strokes on the hole, opening Fish up to a three-stroke lead. Uh, we are tied for third again with Devin and Hank. They've been battling all around. And we are looking at hole 15. All right, hole 15 is a par 4, 611 feet. Um, you're going to see most players throw a distance driver here. Um, try and get it down close to the silver pin here and Heiser into the gap. Um, good drives here. We'll leave you with, uh, you know, pretty easy upshots. Uh, this would be something that I would expect most of these guys to get a three on. I'd be surprised if uh, with any par 4s here. All right. Hopefully they can convert. These New England trees don't, don't always make it easy, though, Steve. Yes. <laughs> no, they don't. They don't. You're absolutely right about that. Here is fish. Cut roller? Or, or regular? Yeah, cut roller is a, is, a, is a good play here. The If you tip it up like that and you get a, out where he's going, that is going to be pretty challenging. Um, so that is that is the risk when you when you make that play. That is about the worst spot that you could end up on. <laughs> I can see it working for the eagle, though, if it just keeps cutting the whole time. It does. Devin, that is two turned over, right? Yeah, he, he's going to have some work to do there. He's going to have to navigate either a low gap or some kind of spike hyzer. Hank going for the cut roller as well, but I think that's going to flip over on him. Yeah. I might have jinxed these guys because these guys are all in a little bit of trouble right now. They are, aren't they? It's almost a case of them going for too much, though, right? Yeah, maybe pressing a little bit after, uh, you know, not not making up some strokes there and fish getting a couple strokes on everybody, and that's more typical about what you'd see on this whole standard hyzer. He might have a few trees to navigate, but he really is, uh, you know, just about 150 feet away. Yeah, should be pretty easy up and down. We got a thumber out of uh, Hank here. Whoa. Might grab a par from there. Yeah, bird, a little roll birdie, away there, but, yeah. but not uh, not too bad. No. Devin trying to flex one over there. And that was a pretty good shot there. That's a tight gap. He's he should be inside the circle. Yeah, that should work for a birdie the way he puts. And here is where Fish ended up. Oh, my. That yeah, was like a sky roller here, it looks like. And uh, Oh, my. A little deep there, and... Uh, I had, you don't see people back there that often. I can't imagine it's too good. <laughs> no. Hopefully it's a clean putt. It might just be kind of awkward footing. Uh, got a forehand roller out of cam. Uh, finds that late rock wall. So you still have a putt, though. Yeah, it's still 30, 35. Hank? Get some. Man. Oh. I thought about it. Flash those chains. And here is fish in the woods. <laughs> he's looking up, so he, uh, he's. That is, this isn't uh, something he's trying to make, I don't think. Oh, but he, <laughs> but he almost did. He almost did, and probably, well, at least he'll save his par. Uh, Cam, thank you. Great birdie. 
Yeah, nice putt, 35 footer dead center. He was making putts. Uh, you know, every time I turned around, I, he seemed to be making a putt, and uh, that was that was a nice one to pick up there. Get one of those strokes back on fish. Yeah, surprised he hasn't been picked up by a manufacturer yet. <laughs> he is good. There. Devin, very surprising there. Yeah. Bit of a misfire out of him. Hank making good on the par save. And uh, Devin will be coming back for his. Nicely done. That was a good catch, too. Yep. I should have some commentary on a Justin Billadoo round. So it's, it's all about the beards lately. <laughs> Devin's got a nice one going. Yeah, he's been working on that one for years. I bet. There's Fish cleaning up his par after pitching out of the woods. I bet he will be losing a stroke to Cam, who gets within two. Uh, definitely within striking distance. Uh, we are still tied for third. Devin and Hank battling it out all day. Uh, that's going to lead us into 16. What's our play, Steve? All right, I think you're going to see two plays here. Uh, most players go down the right-hand side here um, and try and get it to just crest the rock wall before leading down to the basket. Uh, I think with Cameron's sidearm, I think you're going to see him throw throw a sidearm maybe up a little bit higher down the left-hand side. All right, we'll see we'll see who chooses what. I can't. Oh, forehand roller. All right, that's another <laughs> new one for me. Is this going to jump the rock wall? Yeah, pretty surprising. They typically don't jump the rock wall, especially yeah. over on that side. Um, so a little bit of a questionable play there. Yeah, I agree. Especially with his great forehand, and that gap looks super tasty for a, for a forehand. Yeah, I, thought, I definitely would have thought that would have been his approach. And Fish throwing, you, you know, textbook drive right there. Um, not the easiest hole, and he just threw it just about perfect. Devin, there's that forehand play you talked about. Yeah, and that can work really nicely. It kind of checks into the hill. Um, and it, like you said, it's a little bit bigger gap down the left-hand side. Hank? Mm, caught that last cedar tree there, so he's going to be well short with nothing left to do but really lay up for par. It looks like Cam is going to try and bang this one. Wow. That's a nice bid. That sure was. Hank from just a little bit closer, not much. Two great, great bids. Yeah, and he got a little closer than I was expecting him to be, and uh, you know, definitely downhill bid there. He didn't look like he went too far though. Nah. Fish, no worries on that comeback bird. Nice hole out of him. And this will be Hank. Coming back uh, for the par. Dang. Uh, Cam drops in in his par. Uh, Devin will practically drop in birdie here. So we'll get two strokes on uh, on Hank. Yeah, and these guys have been going back and forth the whole day, and. Uh... And it's uh, kind of funny because they, they play a lot of rounds together, so this is uh, nothing new for them. <laughs> I always love that when you get buddies on the card battling it out. Yeah, there are those twos out of Devin and Fish. Fish opening that lead back out to three, and Devin all of a sudden has a two-stroke lead for third over Hank as we head into 17. All right, hole 17, uh, 555, uh, par three. And this is another absolute bonus birdie. Um, often downwind where you can give yourself a little poke here from the bottom of the hill, but it's definitely one of the holes that is uh, not birdied often. I would imagine. Uh, Fish showed off that power on that last big one. See if he can do it again. Not a bad pull. It's... Um, I think it's 474 to the short pin there, so he put a pretty good move on it, but uh, still not the greatest opportunity for two, but that is just fine. I think Devin's going to fade a little bit earlier, but still make for a pretty easy three.
Cameron? Yeah, anything that doesn't end up too far left or right um, is going to give you, you know, an opportunity to just pitch up there and uh, and move on without having too much trouble. Sure. There's Cam fading out a little bit early as well, but should work for a par. And Hank. Nice pull. Yep, nice nice flight there, and he should have a, a good straight look at it. I believe Hank will be up first. Yes, he is. And like you mentioned, just looking right at the basket. Nothing in the way, really, other than the other basket. Not the best, not the worst. Well done by Devin. And Cameron. He looked like he almost wanted to give that a little run there, and he stays close, so uh should be an easy par for him. Yeah, I imagine Fish will be running this with a nice backstop. Yeah, looks like he did. Still work for a three. It was almost a tweener hole, isn't it? It is, without a doubt. And some of the challenges that we had with designing four layouts um, is that a couple of the holes fringe on that sometimes. Uh, certainly plays as a, a much better par four from the long tee at 747, okay. um, which we'll get a nice peek at next round. Oh, cool. What, what's your birdie rate on the on the 555 location? Probably like 20%. Okay. That's That's good, man. <laughs> There is Cam cleaning up, as will Devin. And that'll work for a bunch of threes, which is probably what they, they planned on. Yeah, I think that, you know, if you're playing for three on that hole, it almost helps keep you out of trouble. If you're trying to get close and you got to get something that tips up and goes a little anhyzer, you're starting to take the OB right into play. And um, so it's almost better if you're not too close. Yeah, I could totally do that. All right, we're going to finish our day on 18. Where are we going? All right, hole 18 here. You're going to see, um, you're probably going to see a lot of rollers out of the guys here. They'll lay it down and then have the rollers climb this hill. There's an OB road here that you got to stay to the right of. Um, so players try and get to the top of the hill, anywhere near that tree line, and throw a second shot, up shot into this pin here. Uh, this is a nice get. Um, anything that doesn't really climb that hill pretty well is pretty much going to be out of birdie contention. All right, fish on the box. There's that roller you talked about. Pretty good. Um, got up the hill enough that he's going to have some pretty good footing. Probably about 330 feet away from the pin. Uh, that is that is just fine. Devin going for the roller as well. Looks like a more stable disc. He really got over on that one. Yeah, if this curls too much... And we don't even really see it pop up the hill here. He's either going to have a steep uphill run up and still be 350 plus. That's going to be a hard up and down. Cameron laying it down on a pretty nice angle. Yeah, that's cutting out early too. He's going to be similar position as Devin um, with a very tough up shot. There's that Wraith out of Hank. And this is heading towards the road, and <laughs> wow! All right, that's not bad. He's got a couple trees right in front of him. He's probably gonna have to play some kind of anhyzer over the road, which is challenging. So here is Devin. Oh my gosh! And that's a great shot just to give himself an opportunity there. You see how close you got to come to the hill there and go underneath the tree still. Yeah. With a fairly steep run up here, so. Uh, that was that was well executed. There's Cameron's second shot. Nicely done. Yeah, that was really good. Really good. He got up there a little bit further than it looked like off the tee, and uh, he's giving himself uh, a good look for Bird. Yeah, I, I always find myself the disc coming out early on uphill run up, Steve. You, you ever notice that? It it is something I you feel like you got to slow down a little bit and really be disciplined on, on making sure that you're you're hitting your line absolutely here's Devin taking the Annie route that'll be a putt so here is Devin's look for the birdie to finish the day 
It's going to be a par. Hank coming down the hill. It was a little long. Yeah, he kind of let that upshot get away from him a little bit. Um, and now he's got a putt for par. Cameron with a nice birdie to finish the day. Yeah, another solid putt from him. He, he made a lot of really good putts. He did. They're all like very centered up, too, when they go in, you know? Really no doubters. Oh, Hank. Dang it. Well, Hank, a good opportunity there. He had himself in position for birdie. It turns into a bogey. And um, I'm sure that's got him disappointed uh, to end his round like that. Yep. It's always sad to finish your day on that because then you have to think about it the rest of the day. There is fish with a nice bird. Or at least I do anyway. I don't know. Maybe you're better at, sh <laughs> better at shaking, shaking those than I am. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's never easy. It's nice to start start off hot and end hot. Yeah. Um, you know, give you something positive to reflect on. For sure. Uh, there are those really nice birdies out of Cam and Andrew. Uh, looks like Fish will have a three-stroke lead going into our final round. We got a, a slightly different layout for the final round, Steve. Yeah, the final round will be a long to long layout, and um, you're going to see the shots be a little bit more demanding um, and uh, a couple more longer holes, par fives, that uh, it's going to be a good battle. And look who made the, uh, the card there. Yeah, I battled my way back up there. Uh, I started off slow and kind of chewed my way back up through the round. So uh, looking forward to going to battle in round four. Awesome, man. It should be a really fun watch. Uh, again, Steve, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you. It was great, great being on. Cool. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll catch you guys for the exciting finish in the final round. Thanks for watching.